Simply put, a macro is basically a bunch of recorded steps that then you can later on instantly execute those steps over and over again. For example, let's say that in each document you want to type in your company's name and then come up here to the font group and apply some formatting to that name, you know, bold italics, text effects, some color. Instead of doing that over and over again in each document, going through all those steps, how about if you just go ahead and do it once, but while you're doing it, go ahead and record those steps as you choose your formatting options there. And then save it as a macro, and then later on, in a new document, just come up here and click on the macro button, which I'll show you how you can add to your quick access toolbar, or a combination of shortcut keys there, like Alt-A, Alt-B, well, you choose, I'll show you how you can choose that. So to get started, to record our steps for our first macro, you can do it one of three ways. You can either come down here on the status bar and click on the record button right there, and you can see in the little pop-up to the far right of it, it says click to begin recording a new macro, or you can come up here, click on the view tab, go to the macros group, click on the drop down arrow, and choose record, or let me click off. You can bring up the developer tab, which by default isn't being displayed on the ribbon, and you can do that by right clicking anywhere on the ribbon, go to customize it, and then come down here and check developer, click okie dokie, and there's the developer tab, click on that. Go to the code group, and there we go, record macro. Well, if I'm not on these tabs, view or developer, it's just easier for me to come down here and click on the record button in the status bar, click on it. Opens up the window so we can give it a name. Let's go ahead and type in, for this example, I'm going to have essential oils and then have a website address that people can go ahead and go to to read more about essential oils and their benefits and also if they like purchase some essential oils. In any case, I'm going to type in essential. Now the macro does not like spaces in the name. You can see I got a space there so when I click OK it says it's invalid. It doesn't say why but trust me it's invalid. Let me click OK, come back down here, start again, click on the record button. Let's type it in again. Only this time I can either go ahead and slam the text all together so there's no space or hit the backspace key and do shift underscore and then type in oils. So that way it looks like to me that there's a space but there's not. There's actually a character there so I satisfy the macro name with not having a space but I kind of get what looks like a space there between essential and oils. Okay next the button. I'm not going to do it here. I got a better way or a way that I like assigning the macro to the button and I'll show you that later on. We can assign it to the keyboard, but you don't want to do that first because when you do that, you're not able to choose where you want to store the macro or type it in the description. Once you assign it to the keyboard, it just dumps you right into recording. So we better do this stuff down here first. Where do I want to store the macro when I'm done recording all the steps? I can do it in the normal template, which means anytime I create a new document, the new document's based on the normal template. So it'll always be available in all new documents. Or I can choose this document right here. You can see the name, and you can see up here in the title bar it's the name. So I can choose the current document only to store the macro, or if I want it available in all new documents, then go ahead and select that. You can also type in a description if you'd like about what this macro is all about. And then once I'm done, before I click OK, I do want to show you how you can assign this macro to the keyboard. Click on it, opens up. Where it says press new shortcut key, go ahead and click in here and then press a shortcut key. I chose the delete key and it says it's currently assigned to clear the text and so we don't want to use that if it's already assigned to some other function in Word. So let me go ahead and hit the backspace key to get rid of that and let's try Alt A, the combination of two keys and it says it's currently unassigned. Great! I'll go ahead and click assign, dumps it over here to say okay the current keys that are assigned to this macro right here is Alt A. You can assign more shortcut keys if you'd like, but for me, one's enough. Let me click close and boom, we're into recording mode right now. How can you tell? Well, one of a few ways. One is that, look at my pointer. You see the little cassette tape below it? That means it's in recording mode. You can also look down here in the status bar and see the stop button. That when you hover over it, it says click to stop recording. Or if you have the developer tab up, you got stop and pause. I don't recommend using pause because you'd think that, okay, I'm going to pause it and then do some things and then restart it. I've had some, well, issues personally with it, but you can go ahead and try it. So now that we're recording, don't worry about time because it's not recording time, it's just recording actions. And the first action that I'd like to do is come up here on the Home tab, go to the Paragraph group, and click on Write a Line. So it recorded that first step. And over on the right-hand side, I'm going to type in... Now there are some features that are disabled when you're in recording mode. A couple of them are when you try to click somewhere to put your cursor there, it won't work. Or when you try to click and drag, it doesn't work. 
So when you want to select your text to apply formatting to it, then use the arrow keys. As you know, you can move the uh, cursor around. But holding down the shift key and using your left arrow key will select everything to the left, right? We learned that in our Word training videos level one. In any case, once I have it selected, I can go ahead and apply some formatting to it. Now, when it comes to applying formatting, you do not want to come up here in the font group and start clicking on your format options. Because when you do, the recording feature will only recall maybe a few of them, not all of them. So what I recommend, as we learned in an earlier training video, when it comes to repeat formatting, you know how you go ahead and you select bold, then you hit the F4 key and it remembers that and applies the bold to whatever text you have selected. So you can keep hitting the F4 key, F4 key, F4 key over and over and over again. Well, if you want a combination of all the formatting when it comes to recording or using the F4 key, don't use the formatting on the ribbon here, but click on its expandable dialog box button there and choose all the formatting within this window because all the formatting that you choose within the window when you click OK will be recorded or when you hit the F4 key, it'll actually remember everything that you selected here. Let's go ahead and choose bold italic. Let's increase the font size to 14. Choose the color and I don't know, we can do underline, I suppose. And then when I'm finished, go ahead and click okie dokie and there you go. And then when I'm done, because I can't use the mouse to move my cursor around, I'll hit the right arrow key so it's at the end, hit enter. And then if I want to go ahead and change this, because now I want to type in my website address, but I don't want the same type of formatting applied to that address as I do up above. So I'll have to come up here, click on its expandable dialog box button again, and then go ahead and change all our formatting within the window. And it will go ahead and record that. Back to black. Let's go ahead to size 12, regular. And let's don't have it underlined, so we'll select none. Click okie dokie. Now let's go ahead and type in our website. And that's it. Once I'm done, all you have to do is come down here and click on the stop button. Stops the macro. Where's the macro? How can I go ahead and rerun it? Well, the long way, let me go ahead and hit enter a couple of times. And notice after I hit enter, it actually converts it into a hyperlink. Well, when you're recording, as I mentioned, it disables a few things. So if I hit enter a couple of times during recording, it won't automatically convert that into a hyperlink. So that's another thing that's disabled there in any case. I can either come up here on the developer tab, click on macros button, or come to the view tab, click on the macros button, or the drop down arrow to view the macros. Brings up the same window. And there it is, essential oils. All I have to do is go ahead and click run. And boom, there it goes, run. And as you recall, this converted it to a hyperlink, and I didn't have it converted before I stopped my recording. It was after when I hit enter. Cool. So now all I have to do is go ahead and run that every time I want to automatically have those steps repeated in any document. Because remember, I saved it to the new document template. Okay, so you can run the macro the long way, or you can do the shortcut. Remember, we assigned the shortcut key to our macro, Alt-A. Let me hit enter, and then do Alt-A and it inserts it. If I don't hit enter and do Alt A, it just pushes it on the same line. So maybe next time when I record the macro, I can go ahead once I'm done, hit enter, so it gives me that space when I go ahead and do Alt A, it doesn't dump it on the same line, okay? That's the shortcut key. How about the button that I can go ahead and add to my quick access toolbar to click on it to execute the macro? Well, it's really simple. Just go ahead and right click on the quick access toolbar to customize it and then click on popular commands and go to macros and there's my macro essential oils go ahead and select it add it over here and then once it's added go ahead and click on modify because I don't know about you but gosh that long name to have that as a button on my quick access toolbar is kind of annoying so what I can do is two things I can not only have a different icon than just this one right here the default one I can go ahead and choose a happy face because it's a happy macro and I can come down here and delete all the extra display text and just have it as essential oils. In fact, I can actually delete the uh, underscore and have a space because this isn't a macro that we're recording, so it's okay with the display name having a space. Click OK. Click OK. There's the happy face. Hover over it. The display name pops up essential oils. And when I click on it, it adds it. Click, 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 click. You can see it keeps adding it. Okay. Cool. Now, if you make a mistake in your recording or you start typing essential oils, but you spell it E S E N T, you forgot the extra S, you go back, you correct it. That's okay because the macro, when you execute it, runs so fast you don't see the changes that you made. So it just automatically puts it right in there. But if you want to edit your macro, I don't really recommend it because I don't know about you. I really don't know much about Visual Basic application coding. Let me show you. 
Let's say I want to edit my macro. Okay, come up here to the View tab, to the Macros group. Click on the drop-down arrow to View Macros, where you can just click on the button. Brings it up. Select it. Go ahead and click Edit. And, hey, do you know anything about coding? I don't. But if it's something simple, I think it's easy to detect in here, like the font name, Times New Roman. If you want to change that, that's easy to look at and type in. Let's change our macro. Say we wanted to use the font Arial. How about the size? That's not too difficult to figure out, right? If we wanted it to be a little bit larger, type in 16. How about down here, the color red? How about if we change red to blue? Okay. Once we're done, come up here, click on the Save button, and then click on File, and Close and Return to Microsoft Word. Now that we made some changes, let me hit Enter. And let's go ahead and click on the button. Hey, it's Essential Oils, size 16, in blue. Cool. So some simple editing is really easy to do. I mean, it pops right out the size, the color. Go ahead and make the changes. But any in-depth editing, well, click on the Macros button, choose Edit. It's a lot of other things that are going on because when it comes to working with the code here, if you go ahead and add in an extra character or delete a character and it's not the way it should be coded here, you're going to screw up your whole macro. So what I recommend, let me go ahead and close out, is that instead of editing it, go ahead and re-record it. I think it'll be a lot easier, especially if you're not familiar with uh, Visual Basic application code. One last thing is that if you're trying to run a macro, but it prevents it and gives you a display bar up here that says uh, Macros Disabled, well then come up here on the File tab, go down to Options, click on your Trust Center, the tab here, come over and click on Trust Center Settings, opens up. You've got your macro settings, which might be Disable All Macros Without Notification, in case if you don't get the notification. And the notification would be the message bar, which would by default say show the message bar. I say never show the information about block content. And if you're like me, then you'd have to come up here because you didn't get a warning. You're just trying to execute a macro and it doesn't work. So you can either go ahead and choose one of these other options, or for me, I choose enable all macros, which is not recommended because people can actually code within the macro harmful things to your computer. So if you record the macro, well, you trust yourself, right? Then if you do, go ahead and say enable all macros. But if somebody sends you a Word document and you're not sure about them or you don't trust them, then you don't want this on because if you execute the macro and they've got uh, bad code in there, it could really wreak havoc upon your computer. So go ahead and for me, I choose enable all and I say don't show the message bar and click OK and click OK and go ahead and run your macro and you shouldn't get any prevention from the macro being executed. And then if I want to delete the macro, again, you can come up here to the macros group or if you have the developer tab, same thing. Just click on the macros button, brings up the same window. Go ahead and select it, and you can delete it. Now, before I go ahead and click Delete, you want to go ahead and look at the organizer, because in here, if you see a macro in one document and it's not available in another, then you can go ahead and select it, click on Copy, and copy it over. How does it work? Well, over here, by default, we have the normal .dotm, the template for all new documents, so this macro is going to be available anytime you create a new document. Over here is, well, the current document that's open, it's Macros, if you want to go ahead and either add it to this one, go ahead and click Copy, or you can go ahead and select it and delete it, and you can say yes, it removes it. Or if there's another document that you have open, you can click on the drop-down arrow and select the other document. But if it's not open, you can say close this one. It doesn't close the document, it just closes the document that displays within the window that's being available. And go ahead and click Open, and I'll go to my desktop, to my Exercises folder, and it doesn't see the files within the folder because it's looking for templates. In this folder, I've got, let me click on the uh, arrow, all files. I've got documents, not templates. And then I can go ahead and select one, click open. It opens it up. It says, okay, in this document here, we don't have the new macros. So you can go ahead and select it, copy it over, and it will be copied into that document. So it's available there. I'm going to go ahead and close out here and not save it. And then come back up here to the macros and go ahead and have it selected, delete it say yes, it's gone. So when I go ahead and do my shortcut key or come up here and click on the button, it says, hey, we can't find the macro that this uh, button was assigned to. Click okie dokie. And then just come up here, right click on the happy face and remove from the quick access toolbar. Thanks for watching. Hey, as a quick reminder, if you like my video, please give it a thumbs up. You can also click on me and subscribe to my channel to get notified of the latest videos. And for great specials on my products, please see the description below this video.